Hello everyone, it's Anna Myrick and today we are going to have a baby onesie tie-dye extravaganza. I'm going to tie up multiple baby onesies and we are going to apply a variety of different dye. Uh, I think we're going to stick with ice dye today, but you can certainly do all this with a bottle and we'll talk about that while we're in the introduction part of this project. I want to tell you about a couple things that I'll be using today. Um, first of all, I have lots of baby onesies. They are cotton. They have been soaked in soda ash, sodium bicarbonate. I get my soda ash from Dharma Trading Company. It's really inexpensive. I can get like 10 pounds for $6 or something like that. If you try to order from Amazon, it's going to cost you a little bit more money. So you're going to need soda ash. The other thing I have um, are trays, of course, to put uh, the tie-dyes in. I have little racks like maybe little oven racks that I can use to elevate. I have some foil that I'm going to manipulate to make fences to hold my ice. I have some repurposed turkey roasting pans that I have cut up um, to form various fences and funnels to put my tie-dye in. All of these things come in handy when you are ice dyeing. You will want to have some kind of barrier to keep your ice in, right? We're gonna to refer to that as a fence. So you're gonna want material for fences. Even old cardboard boxes from Amazon or anything else that can be cut into strips. They don't have to be that high, you know, like an inch or two. But you're gonna to wanna to have something like that that you can repurpose. You don't have to buy anything. What I'm gonna to use today is I have two sets of hemostat clips, which I got off of Amazon. I think they were about $14 a set. I got two sets, and even with these two sets of hemostat clips, um, I can only usually tie-dye one shirt at a time. So definitely on my want list are more hemostat clips. Um, the other thing that you're going to want are some rubber bands. Um, I have some sinew, right, like here. I have um, scissors to cut my sinew if I need. And I also have this little baby fork. Um, we're going to tie up you know, like a classic spiral today, and a fork is going to come in handy. A couple things to remember about baby tie-dyes is that, or baby onesies, is they're very small. There's not much fabric. There's not a lot of room to have folds and pleats, like with adult size clothing. So everything is a little bit more challenging because you're dealing with such small space. So keeping things tight and crisp, if that's what you want, right? Like you can also just splash and do random things and you know, it's all good, it's all fun, but if you're looking for specific patterns or you want it to come out a certain way, we have to be a little bit more thoughtful in how much dye we are applying, how we're tying up the fabric, what's exposed, making sure things don't get too saturated and all run together because it's such little bits of fabric. And I'm only telling you this because, um, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've done it all the wrong ways, right? I've, I've made mistakes, I've put too much dye. So everything that I'm gonna share with you today is from hard earned, exper hard -earned experience. So we're gonna get going. I have a bag of baby onesies that have been soaking. Um, they soaked in the soda ash, right? In the wash for about, you know, 20 minutes. And remember that the ratio for soda ash to water is one cup soda ash per one gallon of warm water. You can start that in a bowl, you know, or something outside if you want, and then transfer it to your wash machine and then use the spin cycle. I just fill up my wash machine and kind of gauge what, how much water I think I need, how many gallons I think is down there, and then I add the soda ash. I kind of stir that up, submerge my shirts, and I let them soak at least 20 minutes, maybe an hour, and then I just hit the spin cycle and spin it out. You don't want to rinse it. Don't, you know, and don't put the lid down, right? So if you're going to soak in your wash, like keep the lid up, because if you put the lid down, it's going to want to start doing the whole process. So it's important to leave the lid up so the wash machine knows we're going to let this stuff soak and then just hit spin spin it out and you're good to go. Um, and then after I do, I like to do a lot of shirts at once and I don't want to just do one shirt at a time. That's not economical. So once I have done a whole mess of shirts, I usually put them or not usually I do put them in a plastic bag, get the air out, kind of twist it around and just make sure they're staying damp. And they can stay that way for a while, right? Like I, I don't think you should do it for months, but you can certainly do it for a week or two or, you know, as you're getting shirts in and out and checking on things. So uh, that's, that's how I deal with the soda ash situation. And again, Dharma Trading Company is an excellent place to get all of the dyes that I'm using today. Soda ash, they have clothes, they have blanks, they have things that you don't even know you need. So I recommend you check them out.
<clears throat> okay, we're gonna get started now and we're gonna start with some folds and we'll be going through the whole process. So we're gonna get started. I have a baby onesie. I have turned it inside out. It has been through the soda wash process. Uh, I'm gonna do this in a fan fold, but we're gonna fan fold from the neck. So I have a bowl. I usually grab random bowls just to kind of give myself a half circle that I like. And I have a washable um, pencil here. And I'm just gonna do that. You can, some tracing, you can use a washable marker or a graphite pencil. It's all gonna be good. So here we have the neck. So I'm going to start to pleat fold, which is this down and up like you're pleating paper. Think about like how you make paper fans in school or even now for fun. So you're going to fan fold following the line that you've created. You know, you can, there's lots of things you can use to make a half circle. And I draw it by something round, a compass, string. All right. So I have my main part done. So now I'm going to take our rubber band and I'm going to put it around to hold that in place. It's good. And now I'm just going to go through the shirt and I'm going to kind of help it find its pleats, right? So I can pleat on the way down. Sometimes if I pull it straight, it naturally wants to make pleats, but remember this is a very small shirt, so might need a little bit more assistance. So the, the trick or the goal or, you know, <clears throat> if it even matters is to kind of have the ridges the same size. Awesome. Okay. It's a pitter patter of uh, my dog. Checking out where his mom is. All right, so that's good. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna kind of smush it all the way down. I'm. We're just going to do the top part as a fan fold. I'm going to leave the bottom part a little more free range, meaning I'm not going to tie it up as tight and I'm going to put it on an incline with the ice and kind of let it like drip. I think it might be kind of pastel -y. Um This shirt, my plan is to use a peony pink, a sea glass, and a gray mist in between those colors. I made one yesterday on an adult shirt and it looked great. Like it reminds me of watermelon and candy and I want to see how it looks on a baby onesie. I want to see if I can duplicate that but in a smaller version. We will see because like I said there is so little fabric here that the effect that I got on the big shirt I'm gonna to have to really think about how much dye I'm putting on this shirt and like being sparse with it. One of the reasons that shirt worked yesterday was because I left so much white space, um, giving, the, giving the dye a place to go when it dripped down in the pan. So this is the fan fold here. You can see I'm gonna leave the end like that because I'm gonna want it to drip and it's gonna go into the tray like on an incline and we're gonna add dye in a little bit. Baby onesie spiral. I have a baby onesie here. We're going to spiral this, this baby onesie. I have a fork, I have a little baby fork. I'm gonna find the center of my shirt. I often can tell that by the tag. I'm just gonna run my finger down. I'm gonna go like a little below the armpit. That's where my center is going to be. So you can be more exact if you want, but I'm just gonna eyeball that. I'm gonna start my fork here and I'm gonna to start to twist. Now, as it's twisting, I'm going to try to help it because I don't want some of these folds to get too tall. 
like overtake like right here. I think baby onesie um, folding is kind of challenging. So I'm going slow. I'm gonna, helping it along. I'm gonna kind of keep that fold down a little bit. I don't want it to overtake. So the part of these, this baby onesie is a little challenging because it has the sleeves that are kind of folded or like tucked in like a little envelope on each other, you know, so you can get it easily over the baby's head. So that's a lot of fabric right there. So helping, helping it become as tight as I can. And now I'm going to remove my fork I take a rubber band. Hopefully slide it under and then keep sliding it under. Alright, so we have something like that. Alright, that's it's, it's alive. It's alive. I'm gonna do that again, kind of like I'm doing a piece of pie. I'm gonna put another one this direction. And I'm gonna put another one down here. Okay, so here we have not bad. All right, that's a small little baby spiral. So when I do this, I'm going to be real frugal with the colors. I'm probably going to do just one color on this side, one color on that side. I might leave the back white, right, and just to see. I could put completely different colors on the back, right? You could also do like a pink and then do blue. The back and the front do not have to match, but it will match when you open it up. You could do one side red and one side blue, flip it over, do yellow and purple, um, and you'd have a great spiral. But also remember when you're adding dye, your secondary colors, right? Is your green and purple and orange, are they gonna to touch each other? Sometimes it's good to go with similar shades, have neutral colors in between secondary colors, or using different, um, different hues of primary colors to get really interesting secondary colors when they touch and blend. So because these shirts are so little, be, be careful using too many secondary colors together. Stick with crisp, clean colors. I mean, unless you're going for that thing for sure, right? Like it's all, all a process, all an experiment, but here is Baby Spiral. Now I'm going to attempt to tie up a baby newborn onesie. This is super small. Um, these are very challenging. So for this, I'm gonna use a series of rubber bands. I'm going to, f I've had, these are turned inside out, all right? So it's turned inside out. I'm gonna find the center of the shirt, right? Which is around like the middle of the armpits. I'm gonna pull it up like this. I'm gonna, just gonna let it fall. I'm gonna take my rubber band. I'm gonna go down, go down to there. I'm gonna wrap it around. And I'm gonna kind of move it up a little shirt here. Something like that. And then I'm gonna put another one there. I'm gonna see if we can create like a sunburst pattern really light so we can kind of keep this uh, circle part, this tip part, like them with lighter colors and kind of keep it up out of the muck. And then we can let this other stuff do something fun. So I'm going to do that. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I think on the hind side here, I'm going to make for fun just another little kiss of color that can be a little different. So same thing, I will show you again. So here's the back side. Here's like the little, the little bum area, like right there above the hip. So I'm just gonna grab that, and let it fold, let it fall, right? Goes like this. Yeah. Let me grab my rubber band. And my front and my back. The rest of this, I can kind of scrunch it a little bit if I want. 
nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna give it some interesting patterns because they're so little. So I'm gonna do something like this, I think. Assortments of rubber bands are great. So there's longer ones that don't have as much tension. That's always the trick, finding the right rubber band for the job if they are not all equal. All right, I like that. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna work out. All right, so here we have baby tie-dye sunburst uh, from on the chest and a little sunburst on the back with a crumple pattern. Here's what it looks like on this side. Here it is all tied up. So this is baby tie-dye fold number three. We are going to fold like a mandala and use our hemostat clips to secure it. So I have my shirt, so it's inside out. I am going to find the center of the front part of the shirt. I'm gonna let the rest of it kind of drape. I'm gonna lay it like that. Smooth that out. Okay. I don't want to do the mandala on the back of the shirt, so I'm going to let the shirt just kind of hang out in the back. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Just going to move this little arm out of the way. Okay. So now that I have it here, I want the middle of my shirt to be just below the armpit, which is about there. So I'm going to fold my shirt in half up to the area that I think is my center, like right under the armpit. So now I have it folded in half. Think about making a paper airplane. I'm going to fold that back. Okay. Kind of smooth it out. And you're going to fold it back one more time. Now you're going to carefully take your shirt, flip it, maintaining your little folds there the best you can. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side. Because of these sleeves, it's a little bit challenging. So, pull that out. All right, so here is my folded shirt, just the front part. We're going to do the mandala on this section here. We'll deal with all that back fluff later. I'm gonna start out with a straight hemostat clips. The ones that I've been getting come in packages where they're straight and curved. The curves are fun. They look like petals, but I'm going to go at an angle. I'm just going to clip that down. Then I'm going to go to the other side and use my hands and kind of make sure that I like where the fabric's at, make sure I have some room. You can see I'm alternating with little triangles. I'm gonna go back to my straight straight clamp using using my resources, using what I have. Angle that. Out. So I'm using the smaller clips at the beginning because. Obviously there's less fabric, and I'll use some medium-sized clips as we move on up. So I'm going to put my last small curved one. Usually I walk to the other side of the table, but since I'm filming, I'm not going to do that. I'll do it backwards. And then this is kind of challenging sometimes to get those to clip, especially when there's a lot of fabric. So that's what we got so far. I'm gonna get out a couple of medium sized ones. No, let's use this curved one here. So my mandala right can stop when I want it to, depending on 
for my clamps I use. Okay, this might be my last one. Let's see. I want to have a really nice big like petal. So I'm going to pull that, make sure it's tight. And I'm going to go at a really deep angle here. All right. I think that's pretty good. That's going to start, the neck is right here, right? So I don't want it too far up. I like that, so I'm going to call that good on my clamps. Now for this part of the shirt, I'm going to kind of keep my fold intact a, a little bit. But then for the rest of this, I'm going to kind of crunch it up. I'm going to kind of use my fingers down here and just kind of make a real quick crinkle pattern in here, kind of flatten it out so the dye and stuff can get to it in a more interesting way. So it's good enough. So here is the Hemostat Mandala baby onesie, all ready to go. Here is the long sleeve newborn and baby onesie. It is turned inside out. One sleeve has been put into the other sleeve. So it's kind of folded like that. That is the back of the shirt. That's the crease. This is the front of the shirt. And that's the crease right there. So I've spent some time smoothing that out, lining it up. I also spent a few minutes making sure that these sleeves were together, that the seams are lined up. That often requires separating the fabric, sticking your fingers in there, smoothing things out, okay? So for this one, I'm gonna attempt to do a crinkle fold and we're gonna leave the bottom to kind of do some fun things like I've been doing on the Big People shirts. We'll see if we can miniaturize this. So I'm going to start by making some pleats on my fold. Crinkle folds are challenging because you, you know, you kind of, kind of have to hold things as you go. Because the sleeves are quadrupled up, it's a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to use my hand to. And I don't know, that shoulder is really hard because it has that envelope type of fold, right? So that's like, oh man, six layers of fabric in there, if not more. So let's see if we can get something going here. Back to the sleeve. Okay, because this is such a short, small little piece of fabric. Um, on the adult ones, I usually have the sleeve hang down, but I'm not going to do that on this. I don't even really know what's going to happen on this fold. It might be too small. So the trick will be to do it without it looking like a complete money mess, for my standards anyway. Like, like I said, you could have complete different visions for your work. All right, I'm going to try that. It's not Superb, but There we go, it's better to find an anchor point for that guy. All 
All right, and for the rest of this, let me see if I can put something else here. There we go, okay. So then for the rest of this, I'm just gonna kind of help it pleat a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, like this is gonna be the kind of the runoff here. We'll do this little flap. I'm gonna put the little flap up here. It's folded a little bit. I just tuck that little guy up there. That'll be good. Tuck that in there. All right, that'll be fine. I mean, we could be adventurous and go like that, which isn't a bad idea. See that I'm out of rubber bands. I'm gonna quickly take a piece of the sinew. I'm gonna lightly do that. I don't want it to be too tight, but I do want it to have some resistance if the color goes down there. So we attempt our baby ice tie dye on incline, full on incline. Okay, here is a top crinkle fold, little baby onesie, front and back, super little. And I, this is like a newborn, so teeny tiny little piece of fabric. It's onesie. It has a little elephant on there. It says lots of love. I want to tie this in like some pinks and purples, but I think I'm just going to do a fan fold on this. So I have my bowl. I'm going to make myself a little guideline of a half circle. I'm going to pleat this following my outline. Okay, just helping this along before I tie it up in my little sinew. It's going to be a little challenging where the elephant is because it has that wonder under stuff behind it. Makes it a little stiff. All right, so first one's going to... Try that off there. And then I'll... I'm gonna go down a little bit into here and just kind of wrap it and give it a pull. I'm just gonna continue this sinew up the shirt. You can also use kite string, you know, twine. It shouldn't, it should have, um, you know, be firm, like not too elasticy. Okay. So I'm gonna let that go to there. I'm gonna leave the end. I've been leaving the ends kind of white to let the dye drip down into there. Kind of gives it a pastel -y effect because this is a little baby shirt. And because I want to use light colors, I'm gonna try to maintain a lot of white on this. I'm gonna tie it up. And there we go. Upcycled. Side fold, baby onesie. All right, for the last sh little baby onesie <clears throat> today, I think I'm just going to do a fan fold or a pleat fold, and then use some hemostat clips to keep it together. So let's turn it inside out. Just going to pleat fold 
which is like a fan fold, right? I'm just doing it vertical. You can also do this fold like on the diagonal up a shirt, right? There's endless possibilities. So I'm going to take this clamp. This is, this is truly an experiment, like. This is going to be interesting. I'll have a clamp down here, so I might tie, tie it. Why? I don't know. Maybe to help pull the fold. We'll see. Okay, so you must add clamp on a pleat fold. Newborn size. I don't know. It should be interesting. All right, this is number seven. So we have tied up seven baby onesies and we are going to go dye them. All right, here is shirt one. It is tied up from the collar fan fold. Remember going from the neck. So I'm going to add some color. I'm going to do it sparingly. I just had a little tool that I was going to use. Oh, here it is. Because these are so little, I don't want to use much dye. So I'm going to put some peony, which is like a pink color. Actually, I'm going to sprinkle that up there just a little bit. Okay. So I got some peony there. Then I'm going to put some gray mist. here. Because I'm using two secondary colors, I don't really want them to do much blending. So I'm going to put the gray mist as a buffer color in between. And then below that, I'm going to put sea glass. It's a little bit thicker here, so I'm going to add just a little bit more dye. That should be fine. We're going to add a little bit more sea mist. No, not sea mist, sorry, gray mist. I'm going to add some gray mist. I go back to that pink color. Take the one off. Okay. 
I'm putting it a little extra there because I want it to run into the bottom of the shirt. I see that I have gotten some around there. So I'm gonna pick it up with my brush. Not that I have to, but you know, waste not, want not. Sometimes I do apply this dye with a brush, um, although it's usually a little wetter, but this is fine. All right, so I like that. I might add a little bit more to this top fold here. I might even take my brush Remember, um, remember baby onesies, not, not much fabric. So I'm gonna call that good. So in a few minutes after I get everything dyed up, I'm gonna kind of crinkle that together a little bit more and I'm gonna add ice in there. And I'm gonna put it at an incline, but I'm gonna step to the side and move that and we'll work on shirt number two. Here is our baby onesie spiral. I have mixed up some peacock blue pretty concentrated in this little tiny container here and then I have transferred it to my little needle nose application bottle and I'm going to find the center of this concentrated dye or half anyway and I'm going to apply this blue on this half I'm not going to do the back side of these, so I want to feel like I have enough blue here. All right, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to put a green on the other side. I think I'm going to do Cayman Island green over here. So I'm going to mix that up and then we're going to apply that on that side. Mark, beginning. All right, I've made up some Cayman Island Green and I've put it in my little application bottle. I'm using this application bottle because the opening is smaller than the squeeze bottles we sometimes use. I did, uh, I made a little too much blue, so I'm gonna keep that and use that in a different shirt towards the bottom later. I do like to kind of conserve, you reuse obviously, not just keep over making dye. So I'm gonna saturate this pup, this shirt here, check the back. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep this white because I'm, I am gonna put ice um, on top of this shirt. I feel like this dye is concentrated enough and if I put some ice, it will bleed through like I want. So Cayman Island Green on this side, Peacock Blue on this side. I'm going to keep the back white, but we are going to add a little bit of ice with the rest of the shirts. In this bowl, we have the Sunburst Fold on the little baby onesie. We're going to be very, very careful with how we approach this. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to get some citrus yellow here and I'm going to put some on this part of the fold, just on the little tip here and I'm going to do the same thing on this one on the back. Remember we have this little tiny one in the back. All right, so I have a little bit of citrus. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of tangerine. I'm just going to use my brush. I normally have a tray to catch the powder. Don't do this on your table. Have something underneath it. All right.
I got some tangerine. I don't care if I get some flex in there, that's good. Next thing I'm going to do is add some fuchsia red. A little bit around the base of the back side. It's okay if I get a little bit in there. I'm going to kind of leave it like that. Then I have the rest of this peacock blue and I'm just going to add it in here for right now. I'm going to let it sit at the bottom. I'm going to add ice over this in a bit but I'm going to let that ride while I get everything else going. So citrus yellow, tangerine, fuchsia red with my leftover peacock blue at the base there. That's really thick. The shirt is folded up in a thick way. I am going to add some ice and uh, we'll see what happens here. In this pan here, which is actually the top of a cake container, I live on a property where nothing gets thrown away. So I have lots of opportunities to recycle. And this makes actually a super great tie-dye tray. I've been using it for all my tie-dye. So side note, if you see the cake toppers from those cakes they get at, you know, the big stores or whatever, like, look how awesome that is. So recommend saving those. They've come in handy. So I have my baby onesie here. I have my hemostat clips ready to go. I like the clips because if I keep them upright like that, it kind of elevates my mandala like a little bit. So it's not laying completely on the ground, at least the, this part, right? So when we start out, I'm gonna have this flat. I'm gonna have a fence around here. And then later, I'm gonna just pull this whole thing up. And I like the clips because I can literally just like clip the ends over, right? And it can hang. And then I can keep my tip out of the muck. And if that doesn't work, I just elevate it on something. Sometimes just a dye bottle, right? If I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want that getting mucky. Anything to get my mandala up so it's not in the runoff of the ice from the back of the shirt. That being said, we're going to start. I had a different color combination picked out, but I'm going to change, right? So I want to do something with greens. I'm out here outside. I'm in Oregon. There's a million shades of green. It's starting to become fall. So I've chosen wasabi, herbaceous, which both surprisingly have turquoise in them. So. I have this wasabi color from Dharma Trading Company and herbaceous from Dharma Trading Company, both with turquoise. The other color I have is this chamoy color. I don't really know how to describe this color. I just started to experiment with it. It's kind of like a peachy yellow, faded, not real bright type of color that I think that I see in the sky sometimes. I like it. I just started playing with it. So since these are three newer colors to me, I've made a few shirts with these colors. I'm going to use these and then to top it all off, instead of black, I'm going to actually put a bronze back here. So I'm going to make some kind of wooded baby onesie. Anyway, that's my, that's my plan. That's the thought. Uh, we don't know if that's going to work out or not, but we're going to give it a go. So I'm going to start out with this chamoy color and I'm going to put it on the tip, my mandala. And I'm using a paintbrush right now. I want it to stay on. I used a paintbrush the other day and I realized that I could actually get quite a bit of dye on with my paintbrush. My paintbrush is mildly damp, which helps. So you can see that I'm just like picking up the dye, putting it on. That's the first color I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go to wasabi. I'm actually gonna mix, rinse my brush out. I don't always do that, but I've noticed um, when I don't do that, sometimes I'm getting some dye particles in my other bottles. So I have a damp towel over here. I have a series of art towels that I use that I launder by themselves or I rinse out by themselves and I just keep using them. Um, it's sad to say that a lot of my towels become art towels because I can't find a towel and I grab a towel and after I've used it, it's an art towel. So I do try to keep a pile of older rags because I'm always needing to wipe stuff off. So the next color I want to use is this wasabi color. So this is a newer color to me. It has turquoise in it. I'm going to take my brush 
And I'm not going to get overly crazy with this because it's a baby onesie and I feel like I, put a, I just feel like I overdid on a shirt the other day. So I'm just trying to be more mindful. It's difficult um, to gauge the right amount of dye for this process. So the third color I'm going to put on is herbaceous. I, it just sounds awesome. Like it's a green color. There's turquoise in it and it just sounds pretty intriguing. And it did look nice next to the wasabi color on the color palette. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit down here, use my brush, pick some up. Now the trick is, and the difficulty is, these colors just wanna run together because they're so close. <clears throat> so I'm always trying to figure out how can I preserve the colors in each section a little bit better. Putting some of this uh, moist on. All right. Just trying to. There we go. Then we're going to go back to the wasabi. Oh. A casualty moment there. So I'm just, I want to, sometimes I just put the dye, like I try to concentrate it towards the clip part and then have it run down. And so that helps create a little bit more white space instead of oversaturating everything with color. So I think I'm going to leave that little thing of white there. Not that it's probably going to do much, but we will see. All you can do is make small adjustments, you know, as you work and go and take note and write them down or make a mental note. I, I recommend writing them down. Mental notes aren't as, aren't as great as they sound. You get lost. So I'm putting a little bit of herbaceous up here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that ride on this part too and like leave a little bit of white on that section. <clears throat> I see that I've spilt some over here, which is cool. So I'm just gonna use that and make a line. I don't know how deep that's gonna go, but that's okay. After that, I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, chamois just Chamoy, whatever you want to say, please correct me. I should have Googled how to say this word correctly first. I'm just going to put a little bit here. Nothing too major. And then I've been liking the effect of uh, dropping some of this pigment straight into different parts of the shirt. So I'm going to put a little bit of that there. A little bit of herbaceous little chunks. I do like to take my brush and like see if I can work it down to the other levels a little deeper. We don't want everything just to be sitting on top, especially on, um, you know, the negative part or the back part, and the bottom part of the shirt. When done correctly, it's been looking like space and other trippy things that I can't even predict. So I really, I've been really enjoying that process with this random dropping of the dye working it in. Okay, <clears throat> so I like that. I'm gonna stop here and, and uh, before I put ice, I'm gonna build a fence around this. I'm gonna move this down. And I do kind of babysit these uh, for a little bit, right? I'm always checking, especially on my mandalas. I don't just walk away from them. I'm really interested in how things are melting and when I think I need to tip things up and, you know, making sure that things are happening here. I'm going to put ice on here, um, but then later I'm going to sprinkle um, some bronze powder on top of some more ice and I'm going to kind of let this all melt with some bronze with these greens. So we'll see. It could look kind of like camouflage. It could, I don't know. We'll see. I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Sprinkle fold baby onesie. It's small. It's delicate. Um, and I'm, I'm motivated by October. It's October 3rd. I love Halloween season, so I'm going to make this uh, Halloween type colors. I'm going to use, well, you know, I was going to use just like the orange, but if I had like some kind of green and then the purple, that'd be another Halloween thing. But 
I think I'm just gonna do the deep orange marigold in brushed steel and keep it orangey. But I really want, that makes me wanna play with like some chartreuse and purple and make it look like poison and bubbling cauldrons. So before I apply the dye, let's talk about the colors. I'm gonna use some deep orange. Um, this is a trick I do. I mean, it's not really a trick, but I write the, the label name on top and if, and if it's a black lid, I put tape on it and write it on top of the tape. Why? Because you'll be surprised how fast this can like disappear or get dye on it or water and then you really don't know what color it is. And it's just easier sometimes looking for things if you have it labeled on the top and the bottom. So I highly recommend that. I'm gonna start out with a little deep orange and I'm using a spoon. And I'm just going to kind of make a couple little piles. This could be too much, right? This is a baby onesie, for, for goodness sakes. Maybe I need a little bit here. I know that they have these weird folded arms, the envelope arms on these baby onesies, which makes tight, that, that area very challenging. So after that, I'm gonna use some marigold. I really like marigold. It's also very Day of the Dead, very fall colorish. Get some there. I'm gonna put this on an incline, and my hope is that the colors run into the bottom of this onesie in, in the kind of the fan fold pattern. That's my thought. Okay, so we like that. I'm gonna end it with a little bit of brushed steel. And try to focus on the areas we don't have much orange. I like unusual color combinations on my clothes and I also like them on baby clothes because it's fun, right? Babies don't just have to be in standard little things. Babies can wear edgy dyes. Okay. So I'm gonna call that good. Maybe a little bit more hair. I could, I've probably completely overdone this and we'll see it could look like some weird camo for all we know, but we're gonna check it out. After the dye melts on this side and the ice, I could possibly, depending on how it looks, squeeze a tiny bit of raven black on the back side of this onesie to kind of pop out the gray and the other color. So that's something that we'll talk about way later after we mound the ice on there and it melts and I kind of get an understanding for what's happened below. Here we have this upcycled baby onesie. There's a little purple elephant on it, or a little gray elephant. It has purple text. It says, I love you. So I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to use peony, which I like, which is this pink color, and an alpine blue. I'm going to put them relatively close together because I want them to also make a secondary purple color um, because, you know, reddish and bluish make purplish. And I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use a lot of white. I'm gonna start with a little bit of alpine blue up here. That's quite a bit. But I do wanna have the white area for fun things to happen. And because I don't want to overwhelm the shirt, there's not much fabric here. I have uh, 30 new, I have 30 colors and some colors I know really well and some colors I don't. So part, some of this is just me experimenting with different color combinations. So I have not used Alpine Blue in this pink color before. And I'm always in the pursuit of purples and shades of purples and because there's this endless, obviously, <laughs> shades of purple because it's a secondary color. And then, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting numerous primary colors and mixing your own secondary colors. 
ratio would be an issue, right? So that's why you're just experimenting, taking notes. You know, you can always measure things out in grams or units and say, I put this much of this blue and this much of this yellow and I got this awesome green. So take notes when you are deep in experimentation. There's no right or wrong way. As long as things are soaked in soda ash, set properly. It's a little thicker down here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more dye. I've been really enjoying leaving you know this much white consistently and just watching how the ice and everything melts down. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit here because the ice is gonna melt down that. All right, so here's our two colors, peony and alpine blue. Alpine blue is not a turquoise based blue. So we will see if this gives me the soft purpley effect with this cute little gray elephant with this lavender-y, fuchsia-y. I don't know, it's a really interesting color. Maybe an orchid color trim. All right, we're gonna put this over in our area to add ice and we're gonna move on to the next one. All right, this is the last shirt. And this is an experimental shirt. This is a new porn baby onesies of all things. I have done a vertical fold, like an accordion fold, just straight across. And now, because I want to, I'm going to use black and red. I don't know what's going to happen, um, but we're going to see. So this is the top of the shirt up here. I have a paintbrush. I'm going to apply some black. If I could just make a series of, you know, like black baby clothes, I would, but you know, I know not everybody's like down for that. So I've been using the color. I like color. I love color. So this, this is gonna, I don't, I, ha I literally have uh, no expectations for this. I have no idea. What I am excited about is that I have hemostat hemostat clamps on this shirt, which I think are going to be cool. Now, part of me wonders, I'm just going to work out a process here. If I should leave an area white and do red, black, red, black, and leave an area white, I, I think I might do that. And then there'll be a couple white sections, which might give that some area to play. Let's, let's try that. Maybe this is the wrong, the wrong thing to do, but what we're gonna do. So I have red there, I'll have black there. That means I'll have some red down here. get some water to rinse my brush out. I'll be right back. Rolling. Right, I'm going to add some black down here. bit down here at the base. All right, well how exciting. I love it. I love experimenting with new colors and patterns, you know. I think about it all night long. Like I can't wait to get up and like rinse it out. Like that's how much of a weirdo I am. But here is the overview of all of my folds today. So down here, the liquefied peacock blue and Cayman Island green. I am gonna put some ice on top of that. 
Here is our little fan fold, our little, you know, no, our sunburst fold. I did drop some turquoise down there. You can see that. I have the tips up. I'm gonna pile ice in there and I'm gonna let the backside kind of sit in the muck on both of these. So they're in their own separate tray. This is on a steep incline, the peony and the sea glass. I'm going to add ice and also the mist gray. Down here we have the wasabi, the herbaceous and the chamois, chamois <laughs> color. Later, I'm gonna add some bronze over the top of this. I made a fence out of foil. This is our black, our raven black and Chinese red, accordion fold vertical with some hemostat clamps. Actually, this is my sea glass peony and sea mist here. I have a bag. I want it to collect the dye from this shirt and I don't want anything from any of these other dyes to mix. So I kind of have that bag protecting it. Then we have our little pumpkin, marigold, deep orange and pressed steel over here. At the end, I'm going to add some black, I think, on the back. Just a little bit of liquid. And this one is the little elephant that says, I love you, with the alpine blue and the peony. So I'm going to add ice to these, and I'm going to let them ride. Some ice to my peacock blue and Cayman Island green. I'm going to call that good. This is my sunburst fold. I added some turquoise. And there's that future red. I have the tips up, so I'm gonna pile the ice high because I'm not as worried about the yellow getting muddied by the blue because I have the tips up. I'll check on it later, but it's kind of like a tall souffle pan. Over here, this is my green one. I love um, that dye is like ceramic. You know, the dye looks one color, but then it's gonna melt green. It looks brown, but it's not really brown. Having it like hang out on the tips here is really challenging. Sometimes I try to balance them. I've noticed that all the bags of ice are different that I get a little bit more. It's a little challenging. In a perfect world, I'd be able to if I had time, I guess, to make my own ice cubes. But right now, do this, do this and because I'm doing it like this, I'm letting that mandala drip, I'm gonna come back and check and pull this up at some point. That is the tractor. I do live on a family compound. All kinds of activity out here farm work and birds and squirrels and deer and ducks and dogs, kids. I just noticed I forgot to put my gloves on. Um, please remember to put your gloves on and your hands won't be abused. Trust me, you don't look cool. They just think you pick berries, which is cool. I like to pick berries. All right, this is my black and red. I'm hoping it looks like a little Harlequin type of shirt. That's my plan, but who knows? I'm gonna step across here. All right. I have my gloves on, which is the preferred method. So here I am with my gloves on. So over here we have the alpine blue and the peony. This is the little upcycled elephant dye. I like to put a little bit more at top because on this one, I want it to run down to the base run through that. I left it white, white or down there for, for, for a reason. And doing the alpine blue with the peony pink to try to get a little purple. I left a lot of white. So 
see how this all shakes out. All right, that's, that's pretty good. We'll let that ride. Coming over here to my peony gray mist and sea glass. I do have a plastic bag at the end to catch any of the dye. I don't want it to get messy, messy at all. I don't want it to hang out in the muck of these other shirts. All right, then I'm going to add some ice over here. This is the marigold soft orange and gray mist. When this melts, I'm not going to put that much on. I'm going to turn it over and put a little bit of liquid black. So I'm going to let that ride. I'm going to go get some soda ash and I'm going to sprinkle a little soda ash over the ice. Go. All right, I'm just going to sprinkle a little soda ash over all of these dyes. All right, I'm going to I'm going to let everything coast. I'm going to come back and check on this later tonight. Even if it's dark, I promise I'll come out and show the process. Hey everyone, it is around five o'clock the next day. I have a lot of things to do today, so I wasn't able to rinse this out. We're going to do that now and unveil this all together. The tie dyes are in order in which we tied them and dyed them. Yesterday we have our neck fan fold with the peony, mist, gray, and sea glass. Cayman Island green with the peacock blue that was liquid with a little bit of ice on top. That's tie number two. Sunburst with the lemon yellow tangerine fuchsia red with some turquoise uh, dumped in there. This is our manda mandala tie-dye with the chamois uh, wasabi herbaceous with some bronze, right? That soaked all night. This is our tiny little onesie number five. It's a long sleeve newborn. Remember we used the marigold soft orange, some gray mist. Um, last night after I went to bed, not after I went to bed, before I went to bed, I put a little bit of black on the back from my liquid bottle and I put more ice over the front. So I've, I have no idea what's going to happen here. This is our little elephant onesie, right? It's uh, folded on the side with alpine blue and peony. And this is our tiny little newborn number seven with an accordion fan fold and some hemostat clamps. So we're going to start with the first one. I'm going to grab this put it on my tray, turn my water on. It was hard to wait all day to open these up. Like I said, these are tiny. These are all experiments. Uh, I have no idea what these are really going to look like. Okay, we're just going to go through this in a rapid clip. What do we got here for tie-dye number one? Not bad, not bad. It does have that watermelony look I was going for. Very interesting with the gray. Remember the gray has all these different colors. All right, well, I'm happy with that. All right, here we have tie-dye number one, rinsed out. Number two, spiral. Liquid dye, ice on top. It did sit in the muck, so I really don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. It could be overly blue. It could be, it could be all kinds of things. I have no idea. Let's check this out. Is pretty good. Turn this inside out. 
good. Spirals are always, I don't know, interesting for me on baby onesies. <clears throat> That's going to look nice when it's um, rinsed out. That's nice. That's sweet. All right. We like that. That's two. Go. <clears throat> okay. Our third onesie here, the sunburst from the center and on the back. See how this turned out. I think this one's gonna be pretty cool. No, the back side's cute. Okay. So here's the little backsplash there. The cute little sunburst in the center. Right off. That will look nice when it's all clean. Number three. Number four is the green, the green hemostat clip for clamp mandala with the wasabi herbaceous and a little bit of bronze powder. It did sit in its own muck all night. This could be really, this could be kind of camo-y. I don't know what's going to happen here. This could be kind of woodsy looking. Good. Let's see what the back looks like. Oh, yeah, it's got some nice color. All right, that'll be fun. A little Oregon camel. That's number four. Okay, shirt five is the newborn onesie long sleeve with the soft orange marigold mist gray <laughs> with some black involved. I have no idea. I have, I do not have high hopes for this shirt. This onesie. I just wanted to play with these colors. Oh, that's okay. All right. Oh, it looks like a little turtle. All right. Let me turn this inside out. My little sleeves out of each other somehow. There we go. All right. Let's see what we got. Back, back. Here we go. Okay. All right. That's nice and moody. All right. That looks pretty cool. There's some good melty parts on this. It does look like a little sea turtle in the back right here. All right, that's number five. All right, number six is the Alpine Blue Peony Side Fold Upcycle because there is a little bit of a, a little elephant involved here. Super cute. That 
turned out pretty great. Well, that's number six. Let's go to number seven. Number seven, newborn hemostat clip clamp on the accordion fold. I have no idea what's going to happen on this one. We're about to find out. That's pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, that's number seven. I'm gonna go put these in the wash and then we're gonna come back for a reveal when they're all dry and clean. See you in a few. Hello everyone, it's Anna Myrick and we are going to look at the baby onesie extravaganza. All seven of them, they're all clean. They're all ready to go. I'm ready to show you. It was an exciting day waiting to open them up. I'm pretty happy with most of them. You know, there's always adjustments that can be made, but let's take a look now. All right, here is the first uh, tie-dye that we tied up. Let me turn them this way. This is tie-dye number one. Tie-dye number one was a fan fold from the neck with peony, sea glass, and gray mist. Uh, I like this a lot. It looks like watermelon. It looks like a seed. Uh, it's pretty great. Back is nice. Has some nice light colors. I'm happy with this tie-dye. So this is fan fold neck tie-dye number one. Tie-dye number two was the spiral. Remember I used some peacock blue and some Cayman Island green. This is the only one that I applied the dye with a little tiny uh, applique bottle applicator bottle you know whatever whatever we want to say um it did kind of hang out in its own muck you know um I, there was ice on top of it it is nice and watery the secondary color here uh and the lighter color filled in is because it was sitting in its own its own runoff but i like this one it's a, su a successful baby onesie spiral i think they're very challenging so i like that looks like a little snake or a you know a lizard tail so Yay on this. This is tie-dye number two, spiral fold. Here we have this uh, newborn or <laughs> zero to three month baby onesie. We, this is the sunburst fold. We used rubber bands. In the center we had yellow, some tangerine. I used a lot of fuchsia. When things were crumpled up, I added turquoise on top, on the back. We have the little uh, hind end action there with the other little sunburst. I think that's pretty cute. So overall, I think it's a pretty great little tie-dye, especially on this super small canvas. This is tie-dye number three, sunburst. Tie-dye number four, we have our mandala with our clips. I like this one. It's very green. It's very earthy. We used wasabi herbaceous and some chamoy, and then we topped it off with some bronze on the back, but I like this, like whatever's happening here with this uh, turquoise-based uh, wasabi, and the herbaceous is also a turquoise-based green. I like that. I really like the sleeves up here. Some fun, fun things have happened up there with the bronze. Here's the back. That's pretty good. <clears throat> it's kind of turtly, it's kind of fun. I like this one. This is tie-dye number four, Mandala with hemostat, hemostat clamps or clips. This is newborn long sleeve baby onesie that we did in soft orange marigold and some gray mist. If you hear the pitter-patter of my pups. Um, I like this one. It was really challenging, like it's like a newborn, zero to three month size. It does kind of look like a turtle. And then when I, after the ice melted on this one, I turned it over and I added black uh, to the back with my squeeze bottle. That's where that darker color is coming from. And then I flipped it over and put ice back on the front. So uh, I really like the back of this shirt now that I'm looking at it. It's, uh, it's an unusual color, but there's some nice blues and orange. It's a trippy shirt. 
Um, it's definitely, it's definitely one of a kind. I really like it. Like it has potential. So I think I think that was overall successful on this tie dye number five. Yeah, number five. Okay, this is tie-dye number six. This is the side fold fan fold with alpine blue and peony upcycled on this lots of love little pink elephant. It's pretty cute. I like it. It's, you know, it's simple. It's to the point. Gets the job done. It's got some nice little blends. Overall, successful little dye. All right, well, this was our fun little, like, litter. I think this says NB. I think this is a newborn. This is a newborn onesie. Uh, we did the vertical fan fold. I did some clamps, and then I just put uh, raven black and Chinese red and left um, a section of white. Remember, it was all triangles, so I left, like, one triangle of white. I think that's pretty cool. It allowed some area to run and, you know, just gave it a little bit more space. Uh, it's great. This has a lot of potential. It's pretty tight on a little newborn outfit. It also tells me that like clamps on newborn clothes might be the way to go to hold things in place and make interesting patterns. Well, there you go. That is seven unique baby onesies with different ties, different dyes, all ice dyed, all lots of fun, all lots of uh, things to think about it and explore. I hope you had a fun time checking out the whole baby onesie process. And uh, yeah, keep creating things. I'll talk to you later.